Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Tonight, we are playing a one-shot entitled The Lightless Beacon. It was written by Lee Carr and Lynn Hardy. It's available from Chaosium. Our game master is Sham Sabin, and this is our first time running this. So, without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. Shams? Today is Monday, April 12th. 1926 and just a few minutes before 8 p.m. Whatever your own personal reasons, the five of you are all passengers aboard the SS Essex County, a mixed cargo and passenger ship heading south along the coast to the town of Rockport, Massachusetts. There aren't very many passengers aboard the ship, including the four of you that are passengers. There's only another four passengers, including the crew. There's 15 in total. Tonight is the night of the new moon, and if it wasn't for the shining light of the lighthouse on Beacon Island to the south, the dangerous rocky waters of the coast would make sailing nigh impossible. There is a storm beginning to roll in. The northern horizon is a fast-moving blanket of dark clouds, and you can already hear the thunder and smell of the approaching rain. It will be here soon. Oh, dear God, I wonder if they're just going to keep trudging on through the storm. Ain't no stopping this ship. Well, if I keep the damn thing running. And that's what they said about the Titanic, and all it took was a little piece of ice to do that, man. Well, don't look at those rocks over there. Braylon Artois, by the way. Nice to meet you. And you yeah, pleasure to meet you. Uh, Sully. You, uh, do you work on the ship? Here and there, I kind of take what I can get. Times are tough. Indeed. Oh, that fresh air smells good tonight. I love the ocean. Well, it's going to smell a lot more like rain in uh, looks like uh, 20 minutes or so. Oh, I love when it rains. It gets the, gets the marine wildlife up and about. I'm a marine biologist. Uh, name's Virgil. Virgil Wormsley. Really? Well, you study things under the ocean, then? Ah, yes, under the ocean and along the shore. Like oh. clams and lobsters and stuff? Oh, all of it. All of it. It's, uh, I'm uh, working on a, a, a big report that I'm, I'm, I'm putting in, and hopefully this will help make my name in this field. I, I've always loved the ocean and, and uh, all the sort of marine wildlife within it. There is a distant flash to the north, and isn't there soon a... after... Thunder. Isn't there an old all. saying that the uh, that the ocean is an evil mistress? <laughs> She's just as likely to kill you as she is to uh, bring you gently to port. Oh, I I'm not worried about this ship. I've taken this route many times, and uh, the uh, the Essex County is a fine vessel. I think we'll be fine. Well, if you knew what I knew, you'd be singing a different tune. <laughs> yeah. We'll be lucky if we don't end up marine wildlife by the end of this. And, and you say, Polonius Glump, uh, huh. accountant. An accountant, eh? Uh, Braylon. Yeah. Up. Nice to meet you. And you, sir, what's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Charles Lebeau. I'm an antiques dealer. And I'd say, do, does any of you have anything t for seasickness? I, I don't do very well when the seas shift. Well, I can give you a cigarette if you want to smoke that. Uh, I'll give it a try. Thank you. Yeah, I got plenty of Allen's coffee liqueur. That will help. I will take some. Thank you. Le Beau, are you French, sir? Um, on, my, on my father's side, yes. Um, they immigrated... Um, uh, when he was a very small child. I live in France. Uh, unfortunately, no, we didn't speak it in the in the household. Okay, said I said I. Suddenly, the lighthouse to the south goes dark. Can the five of you give me listen rolls? I don't hear a damn thing. Ooh. Yes, I got a regular pass on that. Regular pass? Yeah. You got a hard pass. 
got a nine, which I think is a, is that a hard? Is that, an, ex is that an extreme? I just had the base 20, so I don't think okay. so. Not Are a, you satisfied with a hard you success? Could, you could spend a couple points to make that an extreme. I'll do that. How many? Yes, I'll do that. I think that's just, it's like a fit. So you just spend five points of luck if you okay. roll a nine. Four times five. That's yep. right. That makes sense. All right. I will spend five points of luck on that to make it an extreme. So Virgil, right when the light goes out, it's very, very faint. But you could swear you heard a gunshot coming from Beacon Island at the same time. Immediately, you know, the other passengers, there's an immediate anxiety and the crew is beginning to scramble, lighting whatever other sources of light they can to try and see through the churning waters. Uh, it's a bit of a panic because of the rocks and the like. I grab the nearest person to me. It's probably either uh, Artois or uh, probably Thelonious. I grab them and I'm like, did you hear that? Did you hear that? It, it didn't sound like lightning. It sounded like a gunshot. A gunshot? From Are you sure? from the island it didn't sound like lightning i've been on these waters many many years it it, it sounded like a gunshot from the island well the lights oh, are backfiring the ship begins to shake and this horrible <laughs> scraping sound screams from the hull and a sailor calls out captain we've hit rocks and the hull is taking on water we're gonna need to evacuate jesus oh. christ we, we've hit a rock so as the ship slowly begins to sink, the crew herds everyone towards the set of four rowboats that serve as the lifeboats for the SS Essex County. Uh, the captain calls out to the somewhat panicked group of passengers, please everyone remain calm. There are enough lifeboats for everyone, but with the storm rolling in, our best bet is to aim for Beacon Island. There's not enough time to make it to the mainland. We should just be able to make it to the island before it arrives. All right, let's 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 load up the first foot. Sully, you, you go with these four passengers. And the captain points to the four of you. All righty. Jeez, remain calm. Yeah, storm's coming in. Let's get in these tiny little boats. Uh, Stay calm, we, everyone. We, Stay calm. Do we all so, have to row? No. Um, there is only two oars, so only two people will have to row. Yeah. So... Oh, yeah. The five of I, you. I'm happy to help. Are yeah, lowered into the bow. with our hands. I suppose, Sully, you need to stand in the bow of the ship and make sure we're going in the right direction. Yeah, I can take us there. Why doesn't the blasted lighthouse have a foghorn? The rowboat begins to lower, and eventually you shove off into the dark, churning waters. And as you begin to row towards the island, uh, you know, looking behind you, you see that the rest of the crew and passengers have loaded up onto uh, two other lifeboats. It's all five pe people in a boat. Um, going forward, all you have to guide your journey is a lantern, some flashlights, and a small light shining at the base of the lighthouse's towering silhouette. Keeping my eye on that island, I think I can see a bit of light that might get us there. Yes. You don't want to get lost out here, not in the storm. So as the boat sail toward the island and the storm approaches, a fog begins to roll in and grow thick on the water. And it materializes very quickly. But what's strange is that it has a slight pale green hue as it blankets your surroundings. And in just a few moments, it has obscured your view of basically anything. You can't see the other lifeboats in more than like 10 feet around your boat. And your lights don't shine very far before the fog seems to swallow them. I uh, sort of quietly say to Sully, this is very odd. I, all my ears on the ocean, I've never seen anything like this kind of fog. Like uh, are we going in the right off. direction? Can I have everyone give me spot hidden rolls? Nope. Nope. I got it. I, yes, I got it. I, I, and I it's, uh, it's a hard. A hard. 20. I got a 20. It's a hard. 
I also got a hard. Okay, so regular successes or higher. Um, you can make out that light shining at the base of what you think must be the lighthouse that you saw earlier. But now the silhouette is just barely visible in this dank green fog. So you can you make out what you think is the lighthouse ahead of you. Well, Virgil, I think it's right over there. Uh, uh, Mr. Sullivan, if we're heading towards the lighthouse, aren't we also heading towards the rocks? You're quite correct there, sir. <laughs> you got to point that out now. Huh? But I think option. we can navigate it. This is a much smaller vessel. Um, no, just keep your eyes out in front of me. Uh, if you see something, say something. Well, I hate to break it to you, but this island's all rocks. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now is the time to become a Christian and start to pray. Did you pray to St. Nicholas for the ocean or St. Uh, don't pray to Noah. George. <laughs> <laughs> Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So as you get the rowboat closer and closer to what you think is Beacon Island, once you're maybe, you'd guess, 50 yards away from it, though it's a little hard to tell with, with this fog, you hear a, a slight bump as the boat gets lodged on something in the dark waters. There's no, like, scrape or big violence, but you've got caught on something. Do we hear the waves Splashing on the rocks of the island. Give me a listen roll. Oh, I got a 13, which is uh, hard. Yes, you do hear waves lapping up around up ahead of you. Land is not far. Boat is stuck right now? Stuck yes. Right now. Well, it looks like we hit land, just not where we wanted to. Is there any way I could push us off with the, one of the oars? Um, yes, but first, are any of you looking down into the water? Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it looks like your boat has become stuck on a large piece of metal, but it's kind of hard to tell how large it is beneath the surface. Um, can I get spot hidden rolls? Sure. And for people that are locals to Essex County or this coastal Massachusetts area, also compare, uh, we may compare this to your education score as well. Okay. But first, I, I do have a there. flashlight. Can I shine it down into the water? Yeah, yeah. Um, with the flashlight, I passed. Back, you, get a, you passed. Okay. I passed on education. Just a okay. regular pass. Based so on I'll the address, case, you got it, but not spot hidden. Okay, so I'll address the spot hidden first. So those of you looking down, and you can make out in the water, it looks kind of like the silhouette of like a wrecked ship, but there are no identifying marks, and judging by the relatively small number of barnacles and the general lack of deterioration, it obviously hasn't been here for very long. Now, Sully and Virgil, with your successful no rolls, um, you don't recall hearing of a wreck in this area for quite some time. It's hmm. been a couple years. You know what? I think I heard of a ship that went missing around here a couple months back. I don't know the name, but uh, I definitely heard something about it. So that might be it. Couple months. Uh, it wasn't or, something like was that it, in the newspaper. I don't recall it. It was in. It was in early February. It got For lost. Everybody that never isn't found felonious, it. This doesn't ring any bells. Right. No. No. There hasn't been one any time recently. I mean, this got to be at least a million years old. I I thoroughly no. read the newspaper every morning when I get up, and I didn't read anything like that. No. <laughs> But it does uh, look I, like a ship. It does look like something's on the bottom there. Kind of. Does it look like the bottom of the hull? Like it yeah. flipped over? It looks like it's flipped over and you're caught on like kind of like the one of the edges. Let's see if we can use the oars to push it off. To push us off of the... So if you want to dislodge your boat, you can either get... Someone can either give me a pilot boat or a hard strength roll. 
And if two people are um, working together, then you one person could roll the strength throw with a bonus die. All okay. right. I'll help push. I have a 1% in pilot. And I have a 40 strength. So one of you gentlemen. Maybe it's me larger gentlemen. I got a 75 strength, so if anybody yeah, can beat that. I don't have anything better than that, but I've got a decent piloting skill. Oh, well, then that's probably better. I rolled a regular pass in strength, if that helps. Um, so you, you kind of get slightly off of it, but with just a regular success, you're still caught a little bit. God, we're as stuck as a barnacle. Jesus. Which means whatever this next roll is, is a pushed roll. Because you're trying to do the same thing. So, Denise, you look strong. <laughs> ah, well, I am pretty strong. Uh, I think that's a hard. Let me just roll it again. Yeah, okay. give it a go, Bucko. Well, 33 is a hard, that, yes. That's a hard. Okay. Yeah. So now Thelonious gives it a try. And using your considerable strength, you just barely push off and no, you didn't feel any uh, dangerous scrapes or any holes in the bottom of the boat. So you have successfully dislodged yourself from that wreck. Is that hey, what you wood? Cats, man? Uh, yes, your boat is wooden. It's got a glaze on it, though. But it's not metal. No. no. So, continuing your approach towards the island, uh, the fog begins to lift. And by the time you make it to, um, you see a dock ahead of you on the north shore of the island, the fog is almost completely clear. Right, uh, land how? However, turning around, none of the other lifeboats are anywhere to be seen, though the sinking silhouette of the Essex County is visible on the northern horizon, along with the storm, which is almost here. You can very clearly see now uh, that the small shining light on the island is coming from the cottage attached to the base of the lighthouse. We can need I... to get up. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say we need to get up to that lighthouse, see if we get it turned on again, see what's going on. If there's people lost out there, I don't. I just see no signs of the ships, of the, of the other of the other lifeboats. Oh, paddle us closer, and I'll I'll moor us on the dock. There we go. I, I want to turn around in the ship facing out to sea and yell very loudly. Uh, the dock is over here. The dock is over here. Hopefully they can follow my voice. And in response, all you get is a crack of thunder. Well, well if they can find us. We got to get up to the top of the lighthouse. It seems like something smashed the beacon. So, um, docking on the, on the small pier, uh, it leads to a narrow dirt path hemmed in by long grass that leads to the lighthouse cottage. All of you can hear a faint churning of machinery nearby. And can I get mechanical or electrical repair rolls concerning this sound? Also of note is that stemming from the path that goes straight to the lighthouse cottage is a short um, branch that goes um, to the left and seems to go behind the lighthouse. I, I got a hard success on mechanical repair. Okay. You immediately recognize that as the sound of an electric generator and is coming from behind the lighthouse. Well, generator's still running. Light's out. But the, uh, it probably is an oil lamp that is in the lighthouse. Maybe they just ran out of oil. Well, Virgil said he heard a gunshot. So. Heard something before all this went down. I did. And it, it wasn't thunder. It wasn't, you know, thunder. Well, the generator's got to be powering something. I mean, let's follow it. Let's go to the generator and we'll just start from the bottom and work our way to the top. Well, listen, I know the guy who works here. I'm worried about him. You know, he's... Uh, uh he's uh involved with some bad people so i want to make sure he's okay you know the fellow who works here um i do well why don't you go check out the generator and we'll and Thelonious and i will check out the lighthouse make sure everybody's okay 
can do. I mean, it sounds like they it's might, fun. Might, I'm not a mechanical engineer or anything, but maybe they can instruct me on what to do to help them reignite the light. Yeah, I can go troubleshoot it, check it out, see if there's anything wrong with it, and then uh, I can tie in with you guys after that. I don't know much about mechanical repair, but I'll go along with you, Sully. We should we should at least try to stay together. Has yeah. it started no. raining yet? Not yet, but you can see on it's the horizon coming. that like dark shadow that you can tell like rain. It's going to be like maybe five, ten minutes before the rain is going to be here. So let's get inside, darlings, before the uh, rain hits. Um, so we'll go up to the lighthouse. Okay. So before we split the party, um, regardless of which path you're going to go down, you will approach the cottage. So I'm going to address something first. Uh, a short walk along the path brings you to the cottage entrance. Uh, the front door is slightly ajar, and a small, steady glow can be seen coming from within. On either side of the door is a window. Thin curtains are drawn over both, but a warm, welcoming light shines through those on the left. That is the light that was shining that guided you here. Um, then there is that left path, and you can see looking back there, there's a few sh smaller sheds and shacks out there, as well as a large, dense thicket that surrounds most of the island. And the machinery sounds are coming from one of those sheds. Can everyone give me spot hidden rolls? I got it. So anyone who got a regular success or higher, notice there are small, muddy, animal-like footprints in front of the main cottage mm. door. But beneath them are distinct boot prints only partially obscured by the overlaying animal track marks. The boots seemed like they went outside the cottage and down the path to the sheds, while the animal tracks seemed to coming from that direction to the lighthouse. Can I get either natural world or science biology roles um, or zoology? But I I've think got a really good zoology and a biology yeah. background, so I'm going to give a yeah. roll on this. And uh, natural world, I got an extreme. Okay. Are they cat I've, dog? So, um, both success. of you conclude that the small footprints appear almost duck-like in nature. With your extreme, uh, Braylon, you there is a suggestion here that there is something unusual about these footprints. They look like whatever they are is a yet unidentified species. But definitely bird-ish. Bird-ish. Uh, Duck-like. You say they, I can see that they have webbed feet. Yes, webbed feet. I'm pulling out my sketchbook and making a quick drawing of this. It's, this, it's this like is my a seabird. A seabird or something. Hello? Hello, is anybody here? There's been an accident. No response. Let's go Virgil in. Virgil and Sully, are you two now going to head down the path and then the other party wants to go in? Yeah, sure. Yeah, what do you reckon that was, Virgil? Like a, probably a cormorant or something, right? I, I have never seen anything like it around here. I mean, I'm not really huge avian uh, in my in my uh, field, uh, but I do know a little bit about, you know, like the seabirds around here. Uh, most of most of what I look at is under the water. You know, there's gulls, other types of gulls, cormorants. It doesn't look like any of those that I've seen before. No. Were they fairly large? Um, like no, maybe size? maybe about half the size of the boot prints. So, so not maybe quite pelican size, but not, not small. Nearly big enough to be like, you know, like five or four feet. Oh, well, no, there's no such bird, but yeah, pelican maybe. They got lost, blown up here in a storm. It's happened before. They find seabirds that way out of their habitats. You know, you never know. Just looking for someplace warm to get out of the storm. Um, all right, so we're going to look around inside really quick. Okay. And we're going to um, check out the generator? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I'm I'm assuming at this point that the reason why nobody's here is they're probably dropped there trying to fix the fucking lighthouse. Yeah. So I'm going to address the two going towards the generator first, at least for now. 
So going down the side path, um, the side of a, a cottage, you can see that there is another side door into the cottage now that you're on this side of it and continue along the main branch. It leads further down to the four sheds. Uh, you can also see that the well-trodden path goes beyond the sheds and through a gap in the thicket to the south. And looking down there, you can glimpse like what looks like a south pier at the edge of the island. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like there's a little yellow rowboat uh, there. Um, as well, those uh, set of mixed tracks go into the thicket to your um, immediate left. So, uh, well, if you want... What's it going to be? Do you want to check out the generator first, or do you want to see where that stuff went? I tell you, my my all my training wants to follow those tracks, but I, I think we first should probably make sure the generator is safe and still going to be able to run. I have a feeling we're going to need it. All right, all right. We'll check out the generator, and then we're going to do a little bit of smoothing. Okay. Yeah. So getting to the sheds at the back of the lighthouse, uh, there are four of them. And one of them is built into the side of the lighthouse. Um, you can clearly hear the sounds of the generator coming from that shed attached to the lighthouse. Uh, you just want to go straight to that shed? That makes the most sense, I think. OK. So um, this shed isn't particularly large. Uh, inside is a running electric generator and copious amounts of gasoline and firewood. Uh, though you see there is a hole in the roof above the generator. And right when you guys go in here, you hear a bit of thunder and it starts sprinkling now through that hole, which now that it's not very much rainfall yet, but it's going directly onto the electrical equipment. Oh, is there a tarp in here? Do we, is there some kind of tarp that we see? Uh, yeah, hold on, uh, I got an anchor here. Yeah, give me, can I reach the ceiling? Um, you would be able to, yeah, if you went outside and uh, there's a ladder nearby, we'll say. All right, I'm going to stuff my handkerchief in that hole there. Um, the hole is a little bit too too big for a handkerchief. Um, and while you're out there, the rain starts picking up a little more. It's like, yeah, this, this handkerchief won't be enough. There's, is there any sort of tarp inside the, uh, in the shed? Uh, maybe I no, should check one of the other sheds. There is no, the only thing in this shed is the generator and copious amounts of gasoline and firewood. Can I uh, stack some of the wood over the hole? Uh, yeah, you, you definitely could do that. Here, Virgil, can you toss me up a couple, three pieces of firewood to just put these on top of there? I mean, water and electricity, trust me, they don't mix. I learned that on the way seven or eight times. Good idea, Sally, will do. Okay, so you put a few few logs up there, uh, and that blocks a majority of the sprinkling that is going on now. All right, now just be careful. Don't touch anything unless I tell you to. No, well, believe me, I, I'm I'm just watching you. <laughs> Good thing I got rubber boots on. Oh. I've got my boating shoes on. I think that's, I think that made a rubber. So before we get to your next plan of action, I'm going to cut to the other party. So, so the three of you going in beyond the partially open front door, um, you're in a main hallway that directly in front of you is a lot, the large staircase that goes up into the lighthouse itself. And along the hallway, there are four doors, two on each side of the wide passageway. All four of these doors are slightly ajar, and the door to your immediate left is the one with the light shining out from it. Um, there are light bulbs along the ceiling of the hallway and wires that clearly connect to each of the rooms. Um, only the lights from the immediate left door seem to be turned on, um, but the hallway is not currently lit, but there is a light switch directly beside the door. Uh, Charles and Thelonious you want to check those. I'm going to go straight up to the lighthouse and see if I can find our keepers. Okay. Uh, also of note, uh, after a moment of lingering near the door, there is also, um, there are three coat hooks by the door, only one of which currently has an oil skin hanging from it. 
and two pairs of galoshes stand in a shallow tray just beneath the coat hooks. Uh, there is space for another pair while a pair of indoor shoes sits beside the tray. Two oil lanterns hang from hooks next to the oil skin. There is also a third empty hook by the lanterns. All right. Um, I'm going to tactfully pull out a Webley revolver and take one of the lamps and charge in, screaming. Um, I'm going to say, Michael, are you here? Turner, are you in here? There's no response. And I'm going to just start looking around the house real quick. Um, okay. Uh, Braylon, you said you wanted the beeline right towards the staircase? I'm going up, yeah, up the stairs. Okay, so I'll address you. So going up ahead, um, you get right at the point where you get to where the stairs are, and there's a door to your immediate left, which what you can see from it's a jar, it looks like there's a kitchen in there. Um, you suddenly like feel yourself step in some kind of liquid. You look down, you're standing in spattered blood that seems to be leading from that kitchen door and to the stairs. You're the only one that sees this right now. Give me a sanity roll. Dear God. Oh, I should also say that in the pool of uh, blood before you, there are also three largest golden coins lying discarded on the floor. Okay. Oh, dear God, I passed. You Um, don't lose any sanity. I'm like, oh my God, there's there's blood. Uh, Thelonious, Virgil, uh, I think this coming from the kitchen. I shine on I'm the gonna, kitchen door. I'm going to take Charles and say, you know, I got to go up there and basically head out. Oh, yeah. Actually, I haven't even gone up yet. I've just gone to the stairs. So it's the it's at the base of the stairs. It's the door on yes. our level. Okay. So you guys are yeah, we'll, here. We'll go over and take a look at what's what's there. Okay, so as the two approach, you also see around Braylon's feet uh, I, is a splattered I was, yeah. was going to blood the stain. Okay, you're going to pick up a coin. <laughs> um, there's that blood stain, and now there are two gold coins on the ground because now um, Braylon is holding one of these bloody coins. Uh, Braylon, are you studying this coin? Yeah. Um, you can give me... There's, there's actually quite a few different kinds, so we'll make this... Um, you you have both drawing and painting, right? I do. You can give me either that or a natural world role. Okay. Uh, my drawing and painting are way higher. I did say that, didn't I? I got an 83 out of 85. Well, so, so there is just... an underlying aquatic theme to the coins designs. Um, that is apparent um you also see that the sigils hold a a deeper meaning unknown to you but it seems similar to a lot of designs that have been um found by tribes in the south seas okay it's very strange i'll pick up the other two coins okay these coins also i should say um they're pretty heavy uh, individual, like a like a good Solid like, pound time. each. Um, yeah. Looks like it. If you want to confirm, someone can give me an appraise roll. Yeah, I can look at uh, give an appraise roll on that, and maybe. I I passed my appraise roll too. So. So yes, anyone who gets a success on an appraise roll, they are made of solid gold. Is there a? Is there a sink or something? Probably not here. Probably in the kitchen. Um, there probably would be one in the kitchen, yes. Well, let's check the kitchen. I think you might find a dead body in there. Or at least some, a great deal of blood. The are house. the three of you going to um, split further, or are the three of you all going to go to the kitchen? I'm going to go to where the body is. Yeah, I think, I think okay. that we're both curious. Okay. All three of um, us. Sorry. So going into the kitchen um this is the second door on the left inside it's got a bunch of dirty plates and a sauce pot in the sink there's a table with three chairs and um there are three doors including the one you entered in one looks like it leads outside 
um, and one goes to that lit door to the south. And now seeing through this door that's completely ajar, it looks like it's a study. Um, there is a small wood-fired stove located in the far corner. Um, there is a still warm kettle on the hearth next to it. One of the chairs lies broken on the floor, and there is a small pool of blood on the floor beside it. Um, you guys can give me intelligence rolls, as well as once we address that, um, you could also make first aid or medicine rolls. No. Uh, I did not pass first aid, but I did pass intelligence. Is there a body? No. Um, an intelligence roll, though, uh, suggests that that chair was used as a weapon. Um, and the blood on the, the large pool here looks fairly recent, but based on the pattern going towards uh, the hallway, it looks like it, the trail goes up the stairs to the, um, the actual lighthouse. Right. I am going to go over to the sink and I'm going to wash off my hands and the gold coin coins okay. since I've got blood on my hands. Uh, the water does work. So and you, you, you said wash. there's now another door going into that lit study? Yes. And you can see that it is a study. And in fact, well, I'm, you immediately notice though, while you're washing your hands and looking down, there is actually, it looks like there's a painting in there. Okay. Um, well, I'm, going to take a few minutes to clean my hands because they're bloody. The other two guys can still. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to look over to Charles and say, hey, listen, I heard something about smugglers around this place. Uh, Michael was telling me about that, so watch out. They could be dangerous. Okay. Um, who's Michael? Michael's the lighthouse keeper. Sorry. Ah, got it. I understand. I... Well, somebody um, was harmed here. You can see the chair they hit him with. Yes. Uh, the blood seems to go up the stairs, but I checked out that study there, if I were you. Yeah, let's go see what's in the study. There may be more information. So as the three of you, uh, now with washed hands and clean, solid gold coins, head to the study, we're going to cut back to the two guys outside. Uh, so you have partially stopped um, the, this risk of potential leak. Um, what is your next course of action? All right, what do we got here? How's this uh, generator running? Uh, the generator seems it's in fine working order since you managed to cover that before too much water got on. There's no need for, um, it's, it's, it's good. Um, all that's left are these three other sheds. It looks like there's that Southern pier as well as those tracks. All right, we got to follow the tracks, right, Virgil? I, I I don't know if it's the most important thing at the moment, but I'll tell you, every, every inch of my body is saying there's, there's something interesting at the end of this. Oh. Well, I mean, there's only so many places somebody on here could have gone, so they, I don't know, the guy we're looking for could be down there. Uh, that's true. That's true. So they might as well check him out. I'm sorry. I was thinking about the, the unknown bird. <laughs> Hard to turn off sometimes. Probably some kind of goose or something. Yeah. Probably got so, lost. Probably from Canada. Following the footprints into the thicket, um, the thicket, as you'd expect, is quite thick, green, and lush. Um, stumbling in there, following the tracks best you can, you come across quite the sight. Before you is a hideously mangled body where the tracks end. He is dressed in a yellow oil skin, and the corpse is a bloody mess. His innards have been dragged from his body, slashed, and trampled into the dirt. A revolver lies tangled in the man's innards. Besides the corpse lies a shattered lantern. It is evident from the state of the body and the fresh blood this man must have died recently. Can I get sanity rolls from the two of you? I knew that was coming. Virgil! Virgil! 82. <laughs> 82 on a fail it's going to be 1d6 all right i got an extreme success okay you're just going to lose one i lose four okay just shy of about of men it's very good okay. virgil you seeing what i'm seeing what well, what's going on here I, I i told you guys i heard that gunshot but 
this must be it. He's got a gun in him. I don't know. Well, I'm going to take a closer look. Okay. I'm kind of sick. Um, searching the body, um, you find an empty concealed holster, um, a wallet with an ID that names him as Michael Turner, and most curiously, a Bureau of Investigation badge of one Warren Thomas. Uh, the revolver is a Smith and Wesson 38 caliber special. The chamber only has five live bullets remaining, along with one empty shell uh, casing. Um, can you two of you give me intelligence rolls? Made it. So success is a quick deduction yes. that whatever attacked this man, if he was attacked, he must have only had the chance to get off one round before it dropped him. Um, if you want to investigate the body further, um, you can give me a first aid or medicine roll. I have a good first aid. I think I have a 50 in it. I'll, I'll give that a shot. 70. Huh. Okay. So you don't really have a good estimate of what could have done this, but what you do see is in his innards, you see that there are a couple of needles embedded in his flesh, just like uh, three of them. Jesus, um, Joseph. Are they... You can give me a zoology roll uh, ah. or a natural world, but... Um, I have a really good zoology here. Shot. Oh my God, 81. I'm spending, I'm spending enough luck to bring it. I'm spending 11 points of luck to bring it down to a 70 success. Yeah. All right. Um, so though you have no idea what kind of animal this would be from, it looks like, like an animal, like the spine of like an animal. And it's probably quite poisonous. Um, what immediately comes to mind is like a lionfish or something, you know, a fish that has those kinds of spines. That's like the closest equivalent that you could think of. What do you, what do you see there, Virgil? This, this is a, this is like a, it reminds me of a poisonous spine from some, uh, from some marine life, but I've never seen anything this size, or anything like this. Um, poisonous fish. Can fish even be poisonous? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Very much so. Um, I need to read more books. I, I'm looking around. Are there more of those tracks that we had seen earlier? The, yeah, uh, so the two of you can give me a combined listen and spot hidden roll. All right. Um, I got a 15. I got an 04. Okay, so I think both of you got successes. So both of you, right when you say that, you hear this like strain, like a, like a rustling in the thicket just due to the north. And it's too much of a rustle to be like wind, more like something moving. Um, and looking in that direction, there's the, the shape of like, you're some kind of, it looks like the shape, the silhouette of a person darting deeper into the northern thicket, but it was short, like three feet tall. So there's a, he had a gun, right? Uh, the, yes, there is a gun with five bullets remaining on the corpse. Uh, if you plan on using it, it does do 1d10 damage per shot. And you well, can... I'm going to grab the gun and shine my light over into the thicket and walk over. Um, okay. Um, I... How quickly are you going in that direction? Pretty quick. This thing I'm get gonna pull out my Derringer and follow him, but I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Sully lead. Okay. If the two of you um, are hustling towards the direction of where the silhouette uh, disappeared into the thicket, can the two of you give me uh, dexterity rolls? Mm. No, I cannot. That's a fail. All right, I got a 30 out of 50. Regular success? Okay, so Virgil, you're having some trouble getting through the, the thicket. You're getting your foot caught on a, a little bit of shrub here and there, a bit of vine keeping you back, but Sully's hoofing it, and you're, it looks like you're gaining on it, Sully, but then when you get to 
um, where the, sh- the thicket breaks and before you is coast, there's nothing before you but a set of tracks leading directly into the water. What in the hell? What? Virgil! Virgil ah. then stumbles ah. out of the thicket. Who I kills see. a guy and then goes swimming? Are these are the, are these the same tracks that I saw those little bird like tracks too? They're not looking seen. looking at it. Yeah. Yes, it greatly resembles them. What? Oh my oh, yeah. god! This we may be on the verge of discovering an entirely new life form. What? None of this adds up. I've never seen anything like this. What kind of guy has webbed feet. He must be from New Bedford. I, I've heard some stories about those intimate folk, but nothing, nothing this. They don't even look like deformed human feet. These. So a bird man shoot, kills a guy with a bird poisonous fish man? Come on. I don't know. This is, this is very strange. I, I, we need to go back to the body. I have to take those uh, those uh, uh, needle spines that went in. I, I need to get those as a sample. Oh, sure. If I can get them to my lab. Well, I just had an idea. Out of here. These tracks could just be, I don't know, some kind of bird scavenging on them or something. I don't know. No. It doesn't look, it looks deliberate. Like it was deliberately walking away. Well, yeah, birds, they live in the water. Live in the water. They, they 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 don't hang out there. They with their you know they don't make their homes there. They have their nests on shore and or, or in rocky areas. They don't like they don't just fly over the ocean constantly. Well, yeah, but I mean you know, a guy died. You know, he's got meat on his bones, and bird found it some easy food and got full and walked out and went for a dip. Makes no sense. Uh, Maybe we should let's circle back and, and see what the others have found. See if there's anything up there. We do. We have to report this. We have to oh, report yeah, this. Yeah. Was that there's there's somebody uh, something on the island that's dangerous? It's, it's killed a man. Yeah, you're right. We we should tell the others. Okay, and on your circle back, um, do you want to stop by the body to get those spines, Virgil, or are you just prioritizing just getting back? I. Virgil. Oh, by the way, at this point, the drizzle is actually started up and now it's coming down at a good pace mm. and it's only going to get heavier. All right. I'm going to, uh, we should just go back to the house right now. I'll, I'll come back and get it later. It's driving me crazy. This is, this, this could be the break I've been looking for. Okay. And as the two of you um, circle around the island to get um, back to the front entrance, I'm going to cut back to the people in the study. So um, three of you going in, this study contains three armchairs located in roughly the center of the room. Um, In addition to the hall uh, doorway, there's a doorway that you came from. In terms of furniture besides the armchairs, there is a table to the left of the hall door and a roll top writing desk on the outer wall close to the kitchen door. Um, Both have their own wooden chair next to them. Um, the one by the writing desk currently is tilted onto uh, the floor. The table um, holds several books of maritime tales, a bird book, a repair manual for the lighthouse, a pipe and a pouch of tobacco, a pair of binoculars, a sketchbook, pencils, watercolor paints, paint brushes, and paper, as well as what appears to be a recently finished watercolor sitting on the table besides a neat stack of other rolled up paintings. Um, This painting uh, appears to show a window. A dark shadow can easily be identified um, as the same one next to the artist's desk. As in this was a painting of the window in this study. Um, And looking at the, the painting, um, it's actually a little bit disturbing uh, enough to provoke um, a sanity roll because the silhouette of that shadow kind of has like a disturbing, bulbous look to them. Um, Will I know if uh, Michael painted? 
I just know no. that he painted an artist, but an artist. Um, if you uh, fail the Sandy roll, it's just a one. If you pass, it's nothing. Um, I passed. Um, I, I think we can surmise. Uh, Thelonious, you say Michael. Um, do you know who his companions were? It looks like there were at least three people here. I I didn't ever hear anything about any friends. I thought he was alone. What I'm worried about is he told me that there were some smugglers who were uh, bothering him. Well, we so. see three chairs, and we've seen three of other things. I assume three lighthouse keepers. Um, um, this is quite disturbing. This Braylon, um, concerning that painting, can you give me either a painting or drawing role? I got an 07 out of 80, so or 85. So okay, that is an you extreme. Immediately identify that this painting was pretty recently, as well as it was executed in a hurry. It lacks care and finesse. Yeah, and it looks and there's like there's also something. the uh, the other stacks of watercolor paintings, as well as the uh, the roll top writing desk it looks like he was painting something outside the window something oddly shaped i'm going to look at some of the other paintings okay um when flipping through the many neatly stacked watercolor paintings one more image grabs your attention it features uh the nearby thicket as the lighthouse and one or two other small buildings can be seen in it uh, the darkness of the path leading into the thicket is the silhouette of uh, two short men, almost. But unlike the first painting, this one is dated, February 14th, 1926. Um, there is a corresponding rough sketch with the previous day's date in the sketchbook. So a few and days. there is no matching sketch for that painting that looked like it was rushed. So two months, two months ago. And did the men in the painting look odd? Um, can you give me, someone give, give me natural world or biology or zoology? Getting good, good tonight. I got an 09. Yes. So again, they're bulbous, but you know, they're kind of placed almost to the sides of the head in these silhouettes. Kind of like the anatomy of like a fish or a frog. Are these maybe his two very oddly shaped companions? Uh, looks like it could be some sort of like like headgear or something. Oh, well, maybe it's were... just a style. Maybe Are any of were... them signed? Are any of them signed? Um, no. There is no signing on any of them. Do you think like the headgear would be some kind of diving apparatus? Maybe they were diving for something. Maybe wouldn't it's a be a hat of some sort. Well, if they were smugglers, which they might not be, maybe they were uh, they ditch something in the bay and then go dive and pick it up, take it out, right? It's possible. Yeah. They're kind of short looking. Well, I think they look average. Um, anyways, uh, let's see if we can find our, our fellow. Uh, uh, your friend might be hurt upstairs. Yeah, yeah we got to go get him. While I'm in here, I'd like to go through the roll top desk, if, if that's okay. okay. Yeah, um, so the writing desk um it is so there is the main uh drawer of it as well as there are two side drawers as well so which one would you rather uh check first uh let's go with the the, the main the main top okay. drawer so um it, it opening it it was not locked so it is uh a half inside is a half empty and you know what let's it's faint, but it's still a little bit warm. Uh, it's a cup of coffee, and there's plenty of stationery. Envelopes, stamps, paper, bottles of ink, and a pen. 
Um, there's also a mess of invoices for coin appraisals from a variety of Rockport antique stores littering the rest of the desktop. The quotes range from two to five dollars and all are dated to late February of 1926, uh, just a couple months ago. Um, can you give me an appraise roll? Yes. See, that is that is a regular pass. That's good enough. So knowing that those coins, if it's the same solid gold coins, um, with that in mind, some of these stores are charging a fair price, but others have obviously been attempting to take advantage of um, whoever was having the coins valued. Um, under a large coin catalog further in the desk are several letters from further afield antique stores, librarians, and universities. Each letter begins with Dear Mr. Cassidy, followed by an apology explaining that the sender is unable to determine the origin of the coins described in the received correspondence. However, all the letters state that they are keen to see an actual sample so they can carry out a proper thorough analysis. And if you want to search this center drawer further, I will need a library use roll. Okay. And there's a lot of papers in here. I will do that. And that is also a regular pass. Good enough. Um, so shuffling through here, um, the letters are largely in chronological order. The first is dated to March of 8th, while the latest is dated April 2nd. This most recent one is from a Miss Anna Tilton of the Newburyport Society. Uh, Dear Mr. Cassidy, thank you for your letter dated February 28th of this year. I do indeed recognize the coin you described, or at least I recognize the style of decoration, for we have a piece of similar origin here in our museum in Newburyport. As a result, I suspect your coin hails from nearby Innsmouth, and only the locals of that benighted town could tell you its true worth to them at least. However, if you value your immortal soul, I strongly caution you against contacting any denizens of that place. No good ever came from dealing with Innsmouth. Instead, the New Newburyport Society would be glad to purchase any coins you have from you at market value once their authenticity has been confirmed. If you would care to decide to visit here at the Society's Museum at your earliest convenience, then I can arrange to have your, our appraiser examine the coins, whereupon we can agree upon a fair price for the sale. Again, Mr. Cassidy, I urge you most strongly do not approach anyone in Innsmouth about your find. It really is for the best of all concerned. Your sincerely, Miss Anna Tilton. That is a most disturbing letter. Do you read that out to us? Yes, I would, I would go ahead and read that out to you. Um, can I do an appraise roll just on the gold itself? Yeah, yeah. Um, you could also, you could give me an occult role uh, if you would rather do that, but you could do either of those. Okay. If you're trying to study it further. Oh, I got a 20 on my occult role, which is 60. Uh, so that's a hard. Okay. Dice are on fire. So the sigils on the coin definitely hold some kind of deeper meaning, but that's unknown to you. But like before, you were looking at the, the, the coin and thinking it was from the South Seas. And now those sigils are, looks like it's in the same pattern of many of the remote religious tribes found in that part of the world. Okay. And it's a fish motif. Yes, there is plenty. There is a underlying aquatic theme, plenty of fish. How many? You said they were pretty heavy each. Um, yeah, about as heavy as... Uh, a gold of coin and that's like the size of your fist when you clench it. So let's say, um, how many ounces? I'm not good with my, uh, with my ounces, I'll admit. Well, in 1926, gold was about $20, $20, $20 $21 an ounce, which is a lot of money. <laughs> you know, um, we'll just say that each coin is about an ounce then. Okay. 
it's about $60, $60 worth of gold, and yet they have some historic value. And I, I look around, it's just us. Here, each of us gets one. <laughs> one for Thelonious, one hey, for Thelonious. <laughs> Now that's what I call accounting. And I'm going to pocket one. Can I use track? Can you no, use uh, track? I want to use track to track if I think that the blood stains are like someone's dying right now. Because they're going up the stairs. Um, okay, you want to you want to yeah. go back to like the kitchen area and the stairs to examine the blood using track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that for me. All right. Bring the letter, Charles. Also, there are still well. the other two drawers. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so what level of success did you get on your track? Re regular. Okay, uh, just give me a second here to get to my document. Proper part. Um, okay, um, investigating it, that pool of blood is recent. It was definitely formed 45 minutes to an hour ago. Ugh. And you know what? There's something that's like... I don't know, something slightly off about the color of this blood. It's just a little bit too dark from any blood you've seen before, Thelonious. You know, I and heard the blood something. Smear, definitely, you know, it's going up the stairs into the lighthouse. I think I think Chuck and I are still in the, the room. Yeah, I am. Because I heard something about a penguin's blood being darker because it has more oxygen stuff so they can breathe longer in the water. So I'm thinking, hopefully, this is not a human. Maybe it's just that penguin that we saw tracks from earlier. So Penguins I'm, are from Antarctica, so we're on the opposite side of the planet. Well, smuggling penguins? <laughs> so... I will, feeling relieved, go back into the room. And, Pelican, know, most likely. Chill. Okay. Uh, have pelicans. Yeah, I want um, to check out the, the remaining drawers in this, this desk. Okay. Um, so the, um, the left-hand one, it opens, um, but now looking at it closely, you can see that there was a key that was like snapped off inside its lock. Um, so someone opened it and then the key snapped and that's what it looks like. Um, okay. Inside the drawer, it's an empty wooden box which, and the green velvet lining is shaped to clearly hold a revolver. Um, there are six 32 caliber bullets lying loose in the drawer. Okay. Well, he had a gun mm. or has a gun. Uh I'll go ahead and try the other drawer. This one, you can you try it, it's locked. You can either try to pick the lock or try to break it um, with, a, with a strength roll and the proper object. Um, is there a proper object lying around? Um, if you went and grabbed, like, let's say a frying pan from the kitchen, that'd probably be enough if you managed to bash it correctly. Okay, I'll give that a go. Okay, give me a strength roll. Well, geez. Nope. <laughs> okay, you bang on the drawer. It's just like a small indent in the wood. Not strong enough. Yeah, can I, I... I say I've got an idea. I will... Uh, there's no blood on the floor here, is there? No, no blood in here. Uh, I'm going to try to lay down on the floor on my back and slip under the desk and see if I can get behind the drawer and shove it open. Okay. Okay. Um, you want to try and squeeze it under there? Yeah. Give me give me a size roll. That's the best thing That's I can think size. of for this. Oh shit, I'm big too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I passed my size roll. I'll I'll say that means you've you got enough bulk that you're in there and you're 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 slightly like pushing the desk a bit when you're back there and you're a little bit cramped, but if you just barely reach yeah. And yeah. My strength. I actually got a hard on strength. You you do manage to now that you're back there, you bash it and the uh, pry it. Yeah. You manage to uh, jimmy it open. So um, inside 
is only one thing. It's a small little book. Um, Charles, I assume, because um, Braylon is that. under the desk, that you're the first one that's going to yeah. grab it. Um, Thelonious, help me out. <laughs> so while Thelonious is helping up Braylon, uh, Charles, you are flipping through uh, this book. And it is belonging to one George Cassidy. February, is that 13th? Yeah, 13th, yeah. 1926. I found something on one of my walks, a coin. I kept walking and found another one, then another. I know it's gold. Found some mechanical parts as well. Looks like it might be from a ship. Must have gone down recently, but I don't recall hearing anything about no wreck of late, unless it went down in the last night's storm when the light was out. I better keep this quiet. Don't want the other two here to get a slice of the action. I will keep this journal as a means of documenting my findings. This has to be worth a mint. February 16th. That coin catalog I bought and Foley Point is useless. One thing I know is the coins are old, real old. I've asked if I can stay on for as long as I can until I'm sure there's nothing left there for me to line my pockets. And I have to find good uh, lead. Lead, lead on these coins to go where the money takes me. Maybe I should write to some of my old colleagues to see if they can help. Should probably try to find some of those fancy antique stores in Rockport while I'm at it. Moses might, Moses might be able to identify it. March 10th. The coins are getting hard to find. The two new crew members aren't helping matters. Makes it difficult to search without being noticed. Hopefully they don't cause me any trouble. Even so, I've fitted a small purse which I keep on me at all times. April 3rd. I've got a good lead now. I'll be sending one or more letter to Ensmith then... I'm confident I can get off this stinking island for good. I think Michael is watching me. I've, I've bought a gun just in case. April 11th. Smith said he will leave the lighthouse tomorrow morning. He says he doesn't care if it voids his contract. He's had enough of this island and everything on it. At least that's one less pair of eyes watching me. Still stuck with that sneak Michael, though. Smith says the radio busted again halfway through taking, talking to the bosses. Said he'd fix it before he leaves. Counted my coins just to be sure he didn't lift any off of me in my sleep. I've seen Michael peering out the window, spying my daily walks. I'll have to be a bit more careful. April 12. Smith left without a word. Me and Michael don't even see him go. Didn't take his paintings with him, which is a bit odd. Lousy rat didn't even repair the radio before he left. I'll get to do it. I'll get to it later tonight. Michael has gone to check something outside. Seems paranoid. Think there's more than just tobacco in that pipe of his. If I get if I get more time to write, no word from him. It just cuts off after no word from. Oh. Um. So that tells us a couple of things. Whoever's written that isn't Michael or Smith. The journal is titled as belonging to one George Cassidy. Uh, LeBeau, you notice that as you're going through it. Yeah, it's obvious that there were at least three people at this lighthouse. Right, and Smith was the painter and he disappeared. Yeah, yeah Michael apparently was paranoid about something. Yeah, and uh, I don't hear anything inside this place, so I assume that uh, they're not in here unless we look, just can't hear them. They might be upstairs. Um, mm. Right look, at that if, moment, if, oh, the you guys hear uh, the front door of the lighthouse swing open with the uh, sounds of rain coming in and uh, footsteps of two individuals as okay. uh, Virgil and... Sully, you have arrived. I'm gonna I'm gonna get in really close to my guy standing next to me and I'm gonna say, if we can find Cassidy's body, he's got a purse full of these coins. 
we're the only people who know about it. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, you'll never believe what we found out there. What did you find? Uh, the duck, duck creature? Well, it looks like, well, we found a man that was apparently killed by a duck creature. Uh, Michael? Did he have uh, anything? Michael? Oh, shit. How do you know? I was hoping Michael? it would be the other guy. His ID, he, he, he was an FBI agent. Really? Wow. What? In a, yeah, like in a long vacation. Did you know that? Oh. Hey, there's I, one person left. We got to find George Cassidy. Gonna look. Let's look upstairs. Oh, Virgil found these things inside Michael. These uh, these pricklies. They're these. Uh, they remind me of some uh, marine life. They, they have these poisonous spines. Certain fish, but uh, they're like poisonous needles. But they're so large compared to what what you normally find. Hmm. Like you know a blow dart. Those those duck prints, those, those those bird prints that we saw, they they were at the body where he was killed, but then they they sort of walked off in, into the ocean, further down. We followed the tracks to the where it just walked into the ocean. Birds don't do that. GM, yes. Being residents of Massachusetts, do we know anything about the rumors about Innsmouth? Uh, some of you may make an education role. I believe, I mean, you're French and you've been traveling the world. Uh, so for you, it would be a hard success, Braylon. Uh, but everybody else can also attempt this. And I'm on the action. action. I, I got 20 out of 50. That is a hard. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Just give me Ask. a second. 68 out of 70. <laughs> you could make a horrible joke about the difference between them. Insmith folk in French. But. <laughs> uh, so, yes, you, you, people who have succeeded, you've heard of the stories about Insmith and the Insmith look, which is certain yeah, people there, with scaly S skin and bulbous eyes. Isn't there something about inbreeding? Yes. Incestuous bust. Bunch people, of, have, people talk about Insmith uh, usually in hushed whispers and over the years I grew up with Aren't, it. I, I, I give it little mind sometimes because you know, you know how people the are. The thing is, as I recall, though, the, the Marsh family rose to considerable financial power based on gold. Yeah, he had a gold refinery. That's how he made his money. Very odd. We think that this George Cassidy may have written to the people in Innsmouth about something. About what, what would he write to them about? I don't know, but I if like he invited people. some of them here, as I recall, they're not very nice people. No, they're kind I of think we need to find him. Reach. We need to see if, his, if he's here or his body is here. Well, did you guys at least take Michael out of the, you know, the weather, the weather turned on us. Uh, we we did us. manage to secure the. Uh, to secure the generator, so we'll have power for a while. It was, the water, it was, roof was about to, to come through, and but uh, uh, George uh, Sully took care of that. And, yeah, and uh, outside. I, I'd like to go back there myself because I, I want to. I mean, this is my field. I want to see what killed this man. It looked like more than looked like he was torn apart. And he had those those needles in him. I, I want to retrieve those needles because if I could get them to my lab, I could take a look and. Maybe find out more. So, in other words, we got to get yeah, out of here first. Soaked. I'm sorry. In other words, yeah, he's out there getting soaked. Yeah, great. Gentlemen, I, I think we should consider that the lighthouse is off. Ours may not be the only ship that's out there. Yeah, good point. We need to get it relit if we can figure out how to do it. Have you been up to the top I of the can, lighthouse? We haven't yet. Yeah, take a look at it. Should be the priority now. Like, at least they'll know somebody's out here again. If we get the there is back a third, third person that should have been here, George Cassidy. 
there was somebody named Smith who painted some paintings, but apparently he left, um, which M Michael was the only other one. So if Michael's dead, then where is George? There's quite a bit of blood in the uh, kitchen. It looks like there was a fight. Has anybody been up top yet? We haven't, none of us. No. The blood, the blood didn't look human though. When I looked at it, it looked like a, you know, I'm not the biologist here, but it looked like some sort of other species. Penguin. What? what? He said penguin. I, penguin. It was real, real dark. You know, really. Where, where is that at, Balonis? Let me go take a look. I've got some. The, I can take base some of the Penguin blood. <laughs> base, base of the stairs, next to the kitchen. Let's let's go upstairs. Okay, yeah, I agree. So you want to sneak a look at the the blood, Virgil? Yeah, I want to see okay. uh, see if it's um, you can give me a first aid or medicine roll. All right, let's see. I have first aid or medicine roll on the blood. Okay, uh, first aid I have a 50. Okay. 26. 26. That is a uh, I'm gonna spend a point and make it a oh, wait, that's uh, uh 26. Uh, I'm gonna spend a point and make that a 25 for a hard success. Okay, like. so you're confirming that this blood was formed about an hour ago. Um, right now, it's about 8.45, and the lighthouse went out at about 8 o'clock. Um, and with the hard success, yeah, there's something not quite right about the blood, a little bit too dark. Might not be human in origin. I don't have my microscope with me. I could look... Um, I'm going to take a little, I do have little sample things. I'm going to take a little sample of that and for later use. It might be used, but it, it, can I, can I tell if it blood might be something like, I know we were joking about a penguin, but maybe some sort, I mean, we're seeing those, 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 those flippers. Okay. Like if, if there's, if there's something that it would remind me of from that I'd seen before in, in a marine animal. So I'm you've tempted. got a hard success and you have a really high zoology score. Yeah. So I'm just going to say that it's definitely some kind of maritime life. That's the pattern you're getting here. Gentlemen, this blood is definitely something, uh, something marine in origin. Uh, fish blood? Fish blood? Possibly uh, fish blood or... Why would that be? Why would that be in here? It looks like there was a it. fight. You can see it in the other room. It looks like there was a fight. Somebody used the chair to attack somebody with. Maybe so, hit him with a herring. So we got yeah. into a fight with a fish. It looks like, or somebody highly malformed. You know, they say things about the Innsmouth folk. That they're really ugly. Their mouths are too wide. Their eyes are too far apart. They're bulgy. They have other anomalies in their anatomy. Hey, I'm really ugly. But last time I checked, when I cut myself shaving, it comes out regular color. Well, that just could be. I mean, it's dark in here. Maybe that's why the blood looks so dark. I don't know. I mean, it's I not there were stories about the Innsmouth folk uh, having uh, an anomalies that would be more like a a, a, a sea creature or a uh, or an amphibian, uh, the, the web, uh, the webbing in the palms, uh, uh, different deformities. Well, but I, it was a blood deformity the, of this kind. I, I don't know how they would survive. Isn't that from the inbreeding? You breed too many brothers and sisters, and you start to get webbed feet. You do, but the blood stays the same. It, it, there's no way to. I don't know how something could be viable with this level of. Of fish blood in them. I mean, it, it, aren't there, aren't there some fish and crustaceans that have blue blood? I mean, yes. It's it, it all depends on like, uh, you know, on the transfer of oxygen and how much they require at, at a certain time. I mean, yeah. I mean, with fish, you you, you don't even have lung. You you're going with gills, so they're just r like bringing the water across. That's taking the oxygen out, and uh, it, it's not the same. And to say that there might be people that. Oh, that deformed that they would have that sort of apparatus uh, of gills. This, this conversation is getting a little weird. Yeah, Patrick, let's go upstairs. 
Yeah. Green. I'll lead the way. <laughs> I got Michael um, Scott. All right, let's... And everybody is going upstairs. I think I'm going to pull out my gun too. I see that. I take my Derringer out if it's one bullet. Thelonious has also told us there might be gangsters involved. I don't know what Michael was up to. Well, they mentioned colleagues, didn't they? Well, his would colleagues be... would have been Smith and George. Smith seems to have left. George is missing. Maybe it's I think it's bootleggers or something. I mean, that that ship that we found that nobody's reported that might mean bootleggers or something. Maybe there's bootleggers on the island attacking. I mean, it's certainly more reasonable than the penguin people. There's also to consider that boat that we crashed up against. Maybe there were survivors and they were murderous villains. Mm. Well, bootleggers. Any case, we better see what turned off the light. Yeah, we better turn it back on again before there's another shipwreck. Yeah, no kidding. Then they'll know someone's out here again, and it'll eventually send help and get us out of here. Okay, uh, is everybody going upstairs? I will mention too. There's apparently a radio, but it's broken. What kind of radio? I don't know. To contact the the mainland, I imagine. That's something in your wheelhouse, Sully, that you could take a look at? Oh, yeah, I could probably fix that. We haven't seen it yet. Fixable. I haven't seen it, but I could fix it. All right. Okay. So the five of you uh, going up the metal uh, mesh stairs up into the lighthouse itself, uh, going up about 30 feet. You eventually look what looks to be like a service room near the top of the structure, like right below where the beacon would actually be. Uh, the stairs do continue up to the beacon room above, no trapdoor or anything. Um, you can see the mechanism used to turn the lamp mount in the ceiling. And from the noise and the way uh, it is rotating, it appears to still be working. Uh, there are several boxes stored here. Um, there is also a small workbench and a tool bag. Um, on the workbench, there is a small, what looks to be like a, a service log. And um, there is opposite the workbench is a table with a radio in a semi state of disrepair. No, sure. no people or weird stuff up here? Uh, no, not in here. George Cassidy, are you here? Thunder outside, no response. Okay, if I'm satisfied that there's no people up here, I'm going to kind of put my gun in my belt. If Sully's going to continue up to the mechanism where the radio is, I'll stop on this landing and I'll check the, the rooms you said there were. Yeah, so um, I'm expecting in, to find a body in this, this sir, in this service room. Uh, you can see the whole thing before you. All that's left is if you follow the stairs to the beacon. Ah. Um, in this service room, um, there is just uh, the boxes. Um, there is the service log as well as the disrepaired radio. Oh, okay. So that's here. It's yes, that is before top. you. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'm like the opposite. Play. I'll go up and see what the beacon looks like. Yeah, me too. See if it's electric or oil. Okay. Is anyone going to investigate anything in this room? Yeah, I'm going to look at the service log and look at the tools and see if I can piece together what they were doing. Okay. Looking at the tools in the boxes, um, you see that uh, each contains a replacement bulb for the beacon. Uh, so you've got several of those. Um, at the workbench and the tool bag, it's just your run-of-the-mill tools. Definitely um, the tools you would need if you wanted to do any repairs. And looking through the service log, can you give me a mechanical or electrical repair roll? So that would be, um, I'm going to spend three points to make it an extreme success. It's not necessary, um, unless you really want it. Okay, no worries then. 
Um, so looking through the log, just a quick skim, the majority of the checks purely routine. However, there is one entry that stands out. On February 12th, uh, a couple months ago, wiring problems caused the lighthouse's lamp bulb to prematurely burn out. The log records how the electrical short caused by the bulb's failure, coupled with a severe storm that was happening that day, hampered the repairs, meaning the lighthouse was in darkness for several hours. All right, somebody screwed up. <laughs> well, um, that's when that other ship must have crashed. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, since I know the light's out, I'm going to grab all the tools that I need and the bulb and head up to the top and try to start fixing it. Okay. So now we'll address um, going up. So I'll say that um, Braylon and Thelonious are at the, the front of the line and then Sully and the others are bringing up the rear. So Braylon and Thelonious are the first ones that are going to get a look at the beacon. So um, reaching the lantern room, before you is a wet, bloody scene. Um, two panes of glass in the lantern's room have been smashed, and their shattered remains are all over the floor. You take a step up here, there's a crunch. Uh, the wet wind is also blowing in through those, enough that it makes you a little bit uneasy on your feet, as there is both, it's pouring buckets outside by now, and it's both spraying in water along with the, the, the wind. Um, so, um, adding to the slipperiness is blood from the corpses of two men. One of them looks a little bit odd, a little bit like that Innsmouth look you were talking about. Um, along mm. with these two bizarre fish creatures which lie inside uh, the room's narrow confines. Uh, one of the dead fish things is latched onto the uh, normal looking man's necks by its teeth, even in death. So um, eventually everybody's gonna come upstairs and see this. So I need um, uh, everyone to make Sandy rolls. I've got an 01, I am hot to one. Yeah. Considering that the last game I was in, I ran, rolled in the 90s the most pass. of the game. <laughs> Uh, with an 01, I'll say you actually lose nothing because that's pretty awesome. Um, for those that passed, um, it's only a one. Um, Charles, um, what did you get on your level of, uh, on your sanity roll? Oh, I passed it. Okay. I um, failed. You failed? Okay. I so failed. you are going to lose 1d4 plus one. Uh, Charles, for you passing, uh, you're going to lose two points of sanity, and I'm going to private message you why. Okay. Can I, um, since I got a one, can I quickly bend down and see if I can find the purse that? Uh, uh, yes, you want to rush George over to has. the body. You go yeah. uh, look uh, hung around the neck. Yes, there is a small, there is a satchel um, okay. attached. While um, everybody else is still taking the scene, you quickly run over. Put that in my. Do you happen to have any points in sleight of hand? Ooh, let's see. If not, you can give me a dexterity roll. Uh, dex. Uh, yeah, they see me do it. Okay. You guys see right when you're, when you're um, kind of taking it in, though Felonius kind of has a bit of a, oh, uh, because he failed the sanity roll. Uh, you guys do clearly see Braylon pocket that satchel. Whether you want to confront me now or later. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm kind of coming up the stairs, holding a bunch of stuff, and carefully holding this bulb. I'm like, all right, guys, I got the stuff. Oh, shit. What, is what the hell? What the hell are those things? I think these are our bulbous-headed Innsmouth folk. My God. Can I, can I go over to those? I want to see if, if they Which look... Which corpse is the question? Do you want to look at the man with the Innsmouth look or one of the two fish creatures? Uh, also, I should mention these fish creatures are noticeably short. They're each only about three feet tall. I want to look at the fish creatures because they are the Innsmouth person. I, in my mind, I'm like, yes, there could be a deformed person from Innsmouth here. But at the same time, the, these things are not real. I, and okay. This is a new life form. I, I, I am. This is what I do. So I can I can I quickly make a qu have ask a question? Yeah, I'm trying to understand the top of the lighthouse. I've, I've been at the top of some lighthouses. In the center is the mechanism with mm -hmm. like Frenzel lenses and the light bulb in the middle. 
And yes. then there's a gap. That's the floor that we're on. And then there's the outer glass, two of which panes are shattered. Yes. Oh, and, and there then, was one thing I forgot to mention. I should. And say. then outside that will be a, a balcony going all the way around. There is not a balcony on this one. Okay. It's okay. just this little room. The only like obstacles in this room other than the bodies is the center, the beacon itself, and like the stairs circling up. There's those two broken panes. And also, I didn't mention this because I got caught up in the corpses. Uh, the beacon itself is shattered. Like there is parts of the glass that is broken. Oh, so the front of the is, lens is broken. The glass for the, for the broken glass from the outside panes, is it inside here? Or did it fall to the ground outside? Um, okay, you want to investigate that. Uh, just give me a second. Um, give me, give me a spot hidden roll. We we interrupted Virgil's part. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll cut back to Virgil. So while you were looking around the room, uh, Virgil is identifying the uh, fish creature. So it has the. They both have the head and body similar to like that of like an angler fish with elongated spiny fins, muscular arms, and its hands possess these three sharp claws. In I'm addition, it has large, muscular, frog-like legs, clawed the webbed feet, feet like those of a see. duck, and a long, thin tail. Um, and they, looking at the feet, yes, it does and match. And they match what we were seeing. Oh, my yes. God. This is, this is amazing. This is another life form. Both it and the other one that is a uh, dead man's clamped to the corpse have been shot as well. Uh, one of them has been shot through the eye. The other one has been shot through its belly. Um, and you can give me a zoology roll. All right. 42. That's a pass. Okay. So that does confirm, uh, obviously, the species of fish not recorded anywhere uh, that you've ever seen. Uh, it looks like these bizarre Piscine things would be extremely mobile on land due to their muscular legs and perfectly at home in the water due to their fins and gills. Um, the bullets which entered both creatures only killed them because they went into the softest, fleshiest, most vulnerable parts of their bodies. The rest of their scaly exteriors, although penetrable, are coarse and tough, no doubt providing the creatures with a good form of natural armor. Uh, evidently, the man was either a lucky or good shot, though in the end, it clearly didn't work out for him. God, I, I'm taking like some samples from the skin and from the, I, 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 I wanted to, I, I want to get some samples and stuff that I'm going to put, you know, in my little kit that I have and uh, quick, yeah, taking some quick notes and that, now, do I see where the where the, the spines might have come from? Those poisonous spines. Or, yes, or you see spines things? that are on like its back, and it looks almost oh. like if this creature reared its head at you, mm. like it looks like those spines could be ejected. Oh wow! Th these are the same spines, guys, that I found on that that dead FBI agent. You think there's more of them? There's like two a, here. There was like one that fish. went to the water. There's probably one, at least one more. You better Boys stay alert. Spines on fish, that's possible. Yeah. Shoot them. When you shoot at them, shoot towards the eyes. They, they seem to be very vulnerable there. It seems like they were quickly taken out by that if they attack us. I... <laughs> I'm not planning on shooting on them because I'm not planning on encountering them, but. We're on an island, right? We're not attached to the mainland. Not at all. The mainland is still a good 600 yards um, from the island. And now in the active storm and churning waters, not safe to get out. No, we're we're, we're trapped know. here. The, these things are, are aquatic. They, they, are, they could just wait us out. They could be surrounding the entire island, for all I know. Why? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're in a pretty good defensible spot, I guess. Guess so. I mean, you could assume that there were some others here. Maybe they got away because the other ones are all dead. It's possible. They don't look that smart to me. I mean, head's pretty small. No offense, little guy. I'll give him a little kick. 
So we should be able to barricade ourselves in until the storm's over. Yeah. So when I was looking at the glass, um, did it break like something came in from outside? How, like how something- the spot hidden roll go? Uh, so I spent five points to make it a regular success. That's good enough. Um, so, okay. So there is a bullet hole in the lamp's lens. Um, it looks like you would guess looking the bullet which caused it appears to have shattered the bulb inside before carrying on through to smash one of the lantern room's missing panes of glass. Um, and it looks like the other pane was destroyed by another bullet as well. Though not from, it's not at the right angle to have been the same one that went through the lens. And so looking at it, it looks like it is a 32 caliber bullet. So it doesn't look like these things like crawled up the side of this and like broke in. Right. It was clearly the work of uh, a gun. Did, uh, Does the gun look like it deliberately shot the thing out as if to blind it? Or could it have been collateral damage from killing the little fish guy? That's um, that's oh, enough that I would call for a handgun roll to try and triangulate that. All right. Yeah, regular pass. Okay, so standing to where the, the man's body is that has the fish attached to him, he has a gun in his hand, a uh, six-shooter Colt uh, M1, uh, M1877. 1870, um, still held firmly in his hands. And from where he's standing and where the fish are standing, it's easy to surmise that if he missed from there, he could have ended up accidentally shoot, caused those bullets or caused those breaks in the glass. Yeah. Now, this fella is the is the one that's the Innsmouth fella that's dead. No, there no. there is an Innsmouth fella that is dead by the stairs, and then there's this fella that has the fish clamped onto him. So there's, and then there's the other fish corpse. Yes, there's four bodies. Gentlemen, when you came in, did you make sure you locked the door downstairs? I'm going to go downstairs and lock the door. Um, okay. You want so, someone with you? No, I'll just go quickly and do that. All right. Okay. Gun in hand. <laughs> I think we should seriously consider not turning this light back on, given that it looks like someone's trying to assault the place. Can everybody give me listen rolls? But we would still be causing a past. We'd still be causing another shipwreck if somebody crashes. Out of 10, is that a... Nope. I got a 10. I've got just the base 20. So yeah, I passed. Okay. So people who got a a success hear this pound, the sounds of several pairs of skittering feet. And it looks like they're coming, the based on the sound it's on metal. So they must be moving very quickly up the stairs uh, in the lighthouse. They're not far and they're moving very quickly. Uh, don't, Don't go down there. Is there a door into the where our area? The stairs go straight up here. There are no doors. I'm standing at the top of the stairs, pointing my gun down. Okay, when you get to the top of the stairs, why is you're pointing your gun? You see before you five of those fish things rushing towards you. Um, Can you give me a sanity roll? Um, Also, just a quick question: Was anybody else also going right to the top of the stairs? Well, so what I was going to do is um, when I heard that they were running up the stairs, I'm going to pocket a second gun and just put it in my belt, too, so that if I run out of shots in this one, I can just pull that other one out. I will, I will say that when you uh, pick it up, you get a quick glance in it and see there's no bullets inside of it. It's, I failed. Um, failed. Okay. On a fail, it's a 1d6. Um, and with that, I'm going to save the other five. Ooh, that's the fun one. Give me an intelligence roll. I, um, uh, I just passed my intelligence roll by one. Well, point. you've got the bout of madness table. Uh, so okay. here we go. Uh, and from here, we're going to be going in dexterity order. And I'll call for the sanity rolls when everybody else sees the fish. All right. Um, I I got hysteria. I'm going to scream. Okay. Um, 
but at the same time, can I just unload my gun? Yes, your gun is drawn. Um, so you can have that plus 50 uh, to your, your decks, which means you would act before anyone else. How many shots okay. do you want to fire? They're not quite in point blank range yet. Um, so if you want to fire, if you want to fire all three shots, you'll just be at um, one penalty die for each shot. Now I've got a twenty-two. Does that just have? I think it should say the. Shot or? I think it should say on there uh, to the right, like how much it has in the clip under ammo. Oh. Uh, it's at six. Yep. So, so you have six three. shots. I'm I'm out of my head, so I'm going to fire all three. Yeah. I'm probably That's... also screaming and shaking. Okay. So penalty. It does a one d six on a hit with uh, a twenty two, I believe. So you're at, yes, each it's three shots each at one penalty. I got three misses, okay. and I'm probably falling back screaming. Okay. So right when um Braylon gets to the top of the stairs he screams fires two shots stumbles back um Thelonious you are next I'm gonna oh I have to do my sanity um until you look down but I mean you're gonna look at him eventually so yeah I'm gonna try to kill these guys because they're attacking draw the gun look down the stairs I did pass the sanity you pass you only lose one okay uh I'm gonna basically Try to extract Braylon while sort of like basically want to like interpose, him. like get to the top of the stairs, push him back, and then. Yeah, I'm just doing down. suppressive fire. I'm not really. Okay, so you're that. not like rushing in. Um, you're just firing from here. Yeah, yeah. As soon okay. as I grab him, because my goal is just to get him out, not to. Okay, kill yes, you have successfully interposed him uh, out of the way. Um, right. So uh, you're just going to be at the same. Uh, if you want to fire three shots, it's three shots all at one penalty. All right. With a penalty. Yes. All right. First one is a pass. That's a fail. And then another pass. So two passes. Regular. Okay. Passes. Um, for the first for the first one, um, we'll just say this is fired at the the one of these fish that is at the lead of the pack. So roll damage. All right. Uh, that is five damage okay as you shoot right into it because you're firing suppressing fire um you're not aiming for any specific parts of the body you strike it kind of like right in some of its scales it screams out uh in pain but it still looks like it's got plenty of uh, energy left as it glares it's it, it grits its teeth and hisses at you all right and the second shot was eight damage eight damage conversely the, the second shot you brain it right between the head. One of them, uh, fall, its body goes falling down the stairs, and four of them remain. Um, now it is their turn. So um, one of them is going to rush up enough that now it's like right in front of you, Thelonious. It kind of crouches a bit. One of its spines extends and shoots in your direction. Now you may choose to... Um, to dodge or fight back or do nothing? Uh, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm going to dodge. Okay. This is my dodge. Uh, all right. I'll spend um, 10 points to make that a success. Okay. As you barely dodge out of the way, that needle uh, goes wide, strikes a pane of glass, and sticks in it. Um, then another one is also going to rush up and shoot one of its needles at you as well. Uh, do you want to dodge or fight back? Well, I'm going to try to dodge again. Fair enough. And I will spend... Eight points of luck to make that a success if I can do that. You can. Which Once again, me... it shoots a spine. You definitely dodge out of the way. Uh, the next one that comes up, seeing that its compatriots uh, aren't doing well with their spines, is instead going to try and claw at you. Can I shine my flashlight in its eyes? 
Um, you're freaking out a little bit right now. So yeah, I would I say you'd have to wait for your next turn to do that. But other than that, when it gets to you, sure. But uh, for now, we're just addressing it bit by bit. Um, same as before, would you like to dodge or fight back? This one, I'm going to try to give it a nice punt down the stairs. Okay. Since it's not shooting a poison spine at me. Fair enough. See if that works better. All right, so that is not very good. That is my fight. I, that's fighting brawl, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a fail. Well, I failed as well. So it's one of those awkward situations where it lunges at you, you lunge at it, but you manage to incidentally sidestep each other. Okay. Um, and once it was the final one of these things, which is also rushing up, you're more or less like kind of surrounded by them all in front of you at this point, as they've all been trying to focus on you just because you were at the top of the stairs. Uh, once again, it's the same situation. Do you want to dodge or fight back? <laughs> Jeez. I'm going to try to dodge out of uh, and get into a better position. So they're not all attacking. Okay. Because uh, if, if you I'm can down succeed, to you'll luck. get you'll you can get uh, about five feet back. But that means Braylon would be the one in closest vicinity. Well, you know what? He has more luck than me, so I'm going to dodge. Okay, so that is no, that's that's terrible. Okay. Um, my dice actually succeeded on me. Uh, so that is going to be, let's see here. Um, that is going to be five points of damage as it goes for a claw with you and rakes across your chest, shredding your shirt and giving you a nasty bloody gash. I don't think that's a major wound, is it? I no, I got 12 health. Okay. So that's not a major wound. Um, and with that, they have all gone now, so we are now. It is now Charles's turn. Okay. And so oh, also, I should say, now that they've all come to the top of the stairs, uh, Sully, Virgil, and Charles can make the sandy rolls. That is. That is a pass for me. Pass only lose yeah, one. Pass. Pass. I failed. Failed one d six. The pass is just a one? Yeah. Okay. And also, this probably doesn't matter, Tom, but because you had a bout of madness because of a source of the mythos, you do gain five points of Cthulhu mythos. Yeah. I also, uh, it was only for two, two rounds when I did that. Yeah. Um, how'd that 1d6 go, Sully? I rolled a five. Oh, <laughs> make that intelligence roll. Oh boy. I, I succeeded the intelligence roll. Tom, you've got the bad of madness chart. Oh yeah. Um, do you want to roll an eight sided dice? Two. Oh, uh, you flee in terror. Okay. Of course, there's nowhere for him to run unless he. Uh, it would just be like crouching on the other circles. side of the. <laughs> like you go in like the opposite wall of the lighthouse, theoretically, but um, it's like a. Is it a one d ten for how many rounds you're like that state? It's it's a one d ten for how many rounds, and then at the end of it, you do a con roll to see if you pass out or not. Okay. Do I roll the one d ten? Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Four. So for okay. four rounds, you are trying to get the fuck out of here. I'm out of here, boys. But for now, we will address Charles. Okay. So there are five of these at the top of the stairs. Four. Plus four. Four. Yeah. Four. Uh, Thelonious brained one of them. Oh, that's right. So there's four of those. Thelonious and Braylon are all at the top. Yes. Of the stairs. Uh, at this point, they're all at the top of the stairs. Thelonious is a little bit back, and behind him is Braylon, uh, sprawled on the ground, pointing his gun at them, screaming. Um, is it possible that I could like maybe rush one and kind of push it down the stairs? Yeah, um, that would be a fighting maneuver. Uh, so you can give me a fighting brawl roll. Okay. If you get the one in the front, maybe it'll knock them all down the stairs. Well, that's what I'm hoping. It's like a domino effect, and they all go rushing downstairs. 
I'm going to try to fight back. <laughs> You're going to succeed. <laughs> um, I failed that with a 94. A 94? I failed with a 60. Um, mm-hmm. So as you try to shove it, it uh, sidesteps, swipes at you, and responds, you sidestep. Okay. Um, so with that, um, next up we go to Sully, who is freaking out and is now on the opposite side of the beacon. How about Virgil? See ya. Um, Virgil will be, is at the same dexterity order, so it is also his turn. Oh, okay. And Sully, you've got three rounds remaining after this of your, your fleeing. Virgil has a theory that these things are, they wouldn't have come back if they weren't looking for something. I don't know if I can make the. I I think I think they want something. It, it, it something. They want to kill us. I, <laughs> I think they want something that these men had that were here, and they didn't get it. That's why they've come back, and now we're in their way. I don't know what it could be. Food. Food. Most likely that. I I, I don't know that we have the time to speculate. It, they're about to rip your head off. <laughs> you say as you're screaming, pointing the gun at these things like six feet away from you. Kill I, him, I kill him. I have a derringer with one shot in it. I could, uh, I guess I could fire that at them. <laughs> if you want to get a little bit closer, you could make it a point blank shot. Um, though even then you wouldn't be the closest. Polonius oh. and Braylon still would I'm be. wondering if... Should I should I wait and hold my turn till I get a little closer? Because then I, I I mean I feel I know where to shoot them because I I, I saw where their weak points were. I looked at their anatomy and that it should I wait till they get a little closer to me and I could just boom one shot kill. Uh, I think you could just go up to them. Just walk up to uh, it and shoot. Yeah. I okay. I'm gonna so do that. I'm gonna. You want to aim that. for the eyes? Yeah. So this is a flat roll then, because you're point blank range. Uh, so that's mm-hmm. a bonus die, but it's one penalty for aiming at a specific spot. So it's just a flat roll. Just flat roll. Okay, what is it? I think I have a 50 in firearms. Well, that's a 30. That's a 30. Uh, okay, so um, roll damage for me. Okay, I think I do, uh, this is a, let's say, the Derringer is a 1d6. Oh, it only did one. That's unfortunate. Uh, however, as you do shoot it in the eye, it does. There was no scaly resistance uh, with that shot. So it hit it. It screams in pain and is now clutching its eye, which has, from what you can see, looks like it destroyed the eye. Mm. Um, and with that, uh, Braylon already went because of the plus 50 earlier. Um, so we're going back to the top of the round. And I will ask. Uh, both Polonius and Braylon. You have your guns out and pointed. Do you want to shoot? I, uh, I'm i still a little hysterical, so I'm just going to fire in their general direction. Okay, you're close enough now that it's point blank that your three shots would be um, flat rolls, though Polonius would go first if he wants to fire his gun immediately. Well, is there any, like... Uh... Is there any like wiring or anything in this room, like electric? No. Okay. Okay. What about oil or anything? Is yeah, fire, a- anything like that. Yeah. Um, you, Virgil, you saw plenty of gasoline in that shed outside. Outside. Oh, that's not very helpful. <laughs> not helpful up here. Okay, yeah. I'll just shoot them then. Okay, so yeah. you'll be shooting first. Um, it's three flat rolls because now they're point blank. Do you want to start shooting at the one that Virgil shot or an untouched one? I'm going to look for the one that seems like it's about to eat Brayland. Okay, so that will be an untouched one. So uh, give me, if you want to fire three shots, three flat firearms rolls. All right. The regular pass. Hard pass. And another hard pass. Okay, give me the first uh, shot's damage. It's a nine. 
A nine. Okay, yes. so at that one, despite you aiming through the scales on the back of it, you that bullet pierces through one of them straight through. It falls to the down, gurgling blood, dead. Um, so I'm just it, the other one is in close enough vicinity that even while mid volley, it wouldn't. It's not hard to just quickly aim to the next closest one. Um, so give me the shots damage for the hard pass. Um, that is five. Five. This one um, is kind of like with that very first one you shot where you hit it good, but its scales seem to be stopping some of the brunt. You hurt it pretty badly, though. It's got a nasty limp in its leg at that point as it sque screams um, in pain. And then you've got the last shot, right? Yes. Okay, that's, that's a three. Three damage. Uh, yep. With that one, the scales completely absorb the shot. Crap. Um, with that, it is Braylon who is spraying um, the rest of your clip into uh, the I closest am. one to you. But I'm also going to pull out my flashlight and do that on okay. his face. Okay. Uh, so give me makes three flat flinch. rolls. Okay. And also of note, once you do that, um, your clip will be empty, though you do have empty. a spare. Um, and Thelonious, you'll you I believe you have a forty five auto, so you've got one more shot in your clip. But you do ha you also have a spare. And I have to take a round to, to reload. Um, where's my firearms? Uh, oh, fifty five. All right, I got a nineteen, a twenty two, and a seventy four. So so the first two shots hit. First two shots hit. Once again, how much does the 22 it's a twenty-two? It's D six. It's a D six. One point and three point. Unfortunately, both of those shots, as you ring it, it shoot into it, the things uh, scales are too thick for them to actually be piercing that one. Despite okay. that nasty limp it's got in its leg. Okay, so now I'm just blinding it. Mm -hmm. Um, and now we are going to go, um, the one of these things, uh, that got shot by Virgil is going to try and go for you, Virgil. Uh, uh, would you like to dodge or fight back? Um, well, I don't, I mean, I guess I could fight back with my scalpel. Um, but you could whack it with the Derringer as well. Uh, that's what's in your immediate hand. All right. Why don't I do that? And that will do. Try. I'm gonna go for the eye, the face again. That area. We'll say that if you hit with it, it will do a D4 uh, plus your damage bonus. But I don't know if you have one of those. Yeah, but that'd be fighting brawl, right? Yes. Okay. So that's like 25 would face. You, would you consent to giving the creature 23 a, out of 25? Uh, um, I actually failed my roll, so you successfully fight back as you give it a whack. Um, so as it lunges for you, Virgil, you whack it across the face. Um with your gun. Just um, roll me a d4 and add d4. your damage bonus if you have one. I don't have a damage bonus. Okay. That is a one. Um, you whack it aside and you manage to keep it away from you, but when you punched into it, the scales absorb most of the impact. Yeah. Um, the next one, the one that um, it got sh wounded pretty badly by Thelonious, so it's going to go for you again. Uh, would you like to dodge or fight back as it rears towards you, Thelonious, and tries to shoot one of those spines at you again? Can we give the creature a penalty because I'm shining the light in its face? That is the one that um, had the light shining on it. You are correct, so I will give it a penalty. I'm going to go ahead and fight back because last time i got attacked it didn't seem to do that much so i'm gonna try to just finish it off with my last okay. bullet when you fight back um you're not supposed to actually fire a gun i believe oh, uh, you would be going you'd be going in and whacking it with the butt of a gun sure do that then and that is a yeah my fighting brawl is above 50. It's a pass, regular pass. Um, so as it rears up to shoot the needle, you quickly sidestep as it misses you. You run in and whack it with the butt of your gun. Um, so that will just be, we'll say that's a D4 plus your damage bonus. 
Okay, and my damage bonus is also D4. So it's six. Okay, um, you br as you go for it, you whack it, and like the handle of your gun goes right into its eye as it then suddenly like falls limp. You pull the gun out, and its corpse slides to the floor. Um, and the last one of these things is going to try and um, it's going to try and rush uh, Braylon. So Braylon, would you like to dodge or fight back? Um, I'm still kind of stumbling on the floor, so all I can do is when it's coming at me, I'm going to hit it with my gun. Okay, roll fighting brawl. Oh, I'm sorry. I rolled an eight-sided dice. <laughs> but how did I get eight eight? <laughs> uh, Thirty-eight. I did not pass. That's a lot of luck. Can I spend the luck to pass? Can spend as much luck, luck as you want. All right. I'll I'll make the to get a regular pass. Um, I got a regular pass as well. Would you like this? You you could spend further luck to try and get a hard. Because uh, with fighting back, spend... you need to uh, be higher than the tie. Let's see. I will have to spend 26 points of luck to do it. I'll do it. I don't want to get eaten. Okay. Uh, so it rushes through. You feel like you get a lucky uppercut right on it uh, with the butt of your gun as well. Uh, so roll a d4 plus your damage bonus if you have one. I don't have one. I one. One. Just, it, it, once again, it it's knocked back. It, uh, it, it stumbles back, but as it grits its teeth in a hungry fashion, the scales absorbed the blow, you can see. But you kept it away. We're um, going to put you in some chowder. <laughs> it just hisses angrily at you. Um, we are now back to Charles. Yeah, I'm not messing around. I'm going to pull my gun and start shooting at these things as well. Do you want to shoot at the back. one that's got a missing eye or the one that just tried to attack Braylon? Um, let's go with the uh, the missing eye one. I'll... Okay, and you want to get into point blank range? Yes, please. Okay, uh, give me if you want to fire three shots, three flat rolls. Okay. So, first one is a pass. Second one is not a pass, and the third one is a pass. So that's two passes and one failure. That's two connects on the one with the missing eye. So roll damage for the first shot. Okay. First shot is six. Six. So as you shoot it, um, it pierces the scales, and the thing is barely standing after uh, that shot as it screams in pain. Okay. And the second shot is a uh, ten. Okay, One, this time it is a bullet right through the other eye as its brain splatter out, falls dead. Um, Sully, um, you're just kind of panicked in the corner. Um, so that's the second round of you doing that. Two more to go. And then we are to Virgil. Who, who's left? Uh, um, the... There is only one uh, that uh, Braylon managed to uppercut away from him that has not taken any damage so far. Scales have absorbed anything that has hit it. But there's only one left. I just, I, I don't have any more, I don't have any bullets. I didn't take time to reload. I mean, I, I, I might want to just scab, stab it with my scalpel, but I want to go for the eyes because that seems to, like to the face, you know? Okay, rush in um, with your scalpel. Um, you will be at one penalty uh, when doing that. Okay, because that's a. I got to get a twenty-five. Um, and of course, it is going to try and fight back and shoot one of those spines at you if it can. First roll is a fail. So I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, both rolls. Fail. So as you run in with the scalpel, 
it reacts quicker than you can get within range. It fires a spine and it connects mm. right in your torso. Um, yeah. So can, with that, can you give me um, a constitution roll? Sure. Constitution is 50. 39. Yes, pass. With only a normal success, um, you f suddenly your vision gets blurred and you're seeing everything it double. Can I see, spend luck on that or no? Uh, if you want to make it to an extreme, you may spend luck. That would be, let's see, I got a, let's see, I got a, a 39. I need, a, b -b -b for an extreme, I need, I need a 10. Yeah, I will spend the, uh, whatever it is, points in luck for that. Yes. Okay. Uh, with that, as the ne the needle shoots into you and you manage to just get a, a lucky quick reaction of quickly plucking it out, clutching that part of your torso hurts a little bit, Ooh. but you're fine. Um, with that sample, um, <laughs> <laughs> we are, um, Braylon already fired the gun, uh, Thelonious. You are I'm out of ammo. Oh no, I have one bullet. You're one shot. Um, and also, um, there is a mechanic where you can load. Well, you would only be able to fire one shot if you did this, but you can quickly reload one bullet and then fire. Uh, but that makes that shot at a penalty. But you don't need to worry about that yet because you've got that last bullet. I'll um, just uh, yeah shoot the one shot. Okay, uh, you are in point blank range, so unless you want to aim for a specific part of its body, it's one shot at a bonus die. Okay, I will just shoot regularly. Okay. Okay. And that's a hard. That'll do it. And damage, 10 damage. Oh, actually 10 plus two. So 12, 12 damage. damage. Nice. Uh, so this one, while well, it's, it's uh, looking at Virgil in an angry manner, seeing that its needle uh, seemingly unaffected him, it's not paying attention to you raising your gun at it firing um, right through its heart as it falls to the ground, dead. Um, with the source of your fear gone, Sully, you quickly are now starting to go out of um, flight or flight mode, but you do need to make a constitution roll to see if you faint or not. And Braylon, you are calmed down because you only had two rounds of hysteria anyways, and you just did two rounds of combat. We need to get to the boat and get the fuck nice. off this island. Are you allowed yeah. to spend luck on a constitution? Spend as, spend as much luck as you want. All right. I'm going to spend two points to succeed. Okay. You feel for a second there. Your vision started to darken. You're like, no, 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 no. I need to stay awake. Can't. And you keep it together. <sighs> Thanks, boys. That was a close one. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. <laughs> you all right, Sully? You're welcome. Right? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I was actually over here. I was trying to fix the lighthouse. That was what I was doing. He was doing a distraction dance. What are our chances of getting to the mainland if we get in that rowboat? Not you asking good. me? No, I'm asking them. <laughs> Not good, I don't think. What if there's more of these things now? What if we well, we better barricade ourselves in? I think we just yeah. killed their comrades. I think we should try to get some check out the one of those sheds, maybe get some more gasoline or something to make sure the generator's all right and just board ourselves in. Here. Maybe I don't. I don't know. I think we need to barricade ourselves until daylight. Agreed. At least. Um, and and now that we know what they are and what they look like, maybe there's some like spikes or uh, gaffs or something in here that we can make a more defensible let's, place. Let's take one of their bodies, one of the ones we just killed, not one of these older ones. I, take it down to the kitchen. I want to, he takes out his dissecting uh, equipment and his uh, scalpel. Like, I want to see if there's any weaknesses that I can find that might help us if they, more of them come. I, Want to take a look I, at it? I, I think I think we should think along the lines of uh, the the story about the three hundred Spartans. Let's make it so they've only got they can only come up one at a time, mm. and then kill them one at a time as they come up. 
you know, there was some, I mean, they're not that big. They can't break down a door. There were some other rooms. And if we locked ourselves in one of those, we could last till at least daylight. Right. I don't know. How strong are they? We don't know. They look like they got fish muscles. Their That's muscles cool. do muscles. on, on their arms look, do look very big. Hmm. Well, we shouldn't stay up here because the glass is smashed. They might be able to just climb up the side. Is the storm still going? Yes. In fact, it's only gotten worse. Uh, also, well, Sully, um, because you have such a high mechanical repair, um, just looking at what you've seen of the beacon and the lens so far, you do know that without a replacement lens, which you didn't see uh, below, which you just saw replacement bulbs, there's no way you can bring it back to full working order but if you did replace the bulb, um, it would be in like, it would suffice as a temporary repair. It would still work and just not be as bright. Um, your guess though, is it's going to take, if you tried to do that repair, it would take you at least 30 minutes. Well, I'm going to reload my gun. I'm putting a bullet, in, another bullet in my Derringer. There could be more of these things just downstairs. Let's. Go lock the front door. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. And maybe I can rig something up that can slow them down. Well, yeah, Trip maybe wires. we should fix maybe we should fix the, the lens because uh it seems like I mean this is kind of a crazy deduction, but it seems like they only attack when there's no lens. Remember it said in the diary the light went out and they, they came and took that that guy. We didn't Let's check see. out all those uh Sheds. Do you think there might be a spare lens in one of the sheds? All right. one, of the, one of the sheds did look particularly large. So I've got an idea. So Thelonious, you said something about a journal entry that said they attacked when the lights went out. That's just my assumption. I mean, well, it's the best that we got to go off of. Yeah, so what right. I can do is I can start working on fixing this, and then somebody can go look for a lens while I'm doing this. Aren't, don't those uh, lenses weigh out. like 700 pounds? They're gigantic chunks of glass. Are they? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the lens itself lenses, is about a that lot. Thing. Is this big like cylinder surrounding the beacon? It's only a part of it that's broken. But uh, the problem is, is that that would mean that the whole thing would have to be removed and replaced. I mean, um, if you just put the light bulb in, then at least some people could see it from the ocean. That is correct. I'll start working on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want to start, you already have the tools um, and replacement bulbs in that service room uh, below you with the broken radio. Um, so if you want to start getting working on that, you can give me a mechanical repair roll. Okay. If you get really high level of success, you might be able to do it much quicker. Okay, I'm going to try that, try. and also I'd like to start to fix the radio as well. Which one do you want to do first? The radio would not take very long if you wanted to attempt that, whereas uh, the beacon would. Okay, well, I'm going to actually work on, this is a radio to like talk to people, right? Yes. I'm going to do that too, first because communication is super important, so I'm going to try to fix that quick and then pivot over to the light. Okay, can you give me an electrical repair roll? All right, uh, that's a regular pass. Good enough. Um, give me a few tweaks in just like five minutes, messing around, putting the bolts in the right places, fixing up this wiring. Uh, you get it back in working or order. All right, I'll have this done in the split. So hold on. Good job, Sully. Tell them our plight. They won't be able to rescue us until the storm's over. All right. So now I think I got to survive. Okay. Uh, yes, the radio you hear as you get it back, it, uh, you hear uh, the static sound of it being uh, working and set to like a, an empty channel. All right. What's the name of the island that we're on? Beacon Island. All right. I'm going to get on the horn and I'm going to say, Mayday, Mayday. Uh, coming from Beacon Island. Does anybody copy? Um, in a few moments, uh, you hear a voice on the other end, uh, copy. This is Coast Guard Rescue Vehicle 3. Uh, what's the situation? Uh, we've got, uh, multiple injured parties and, uh, 
the Essex was went down in the storm. The yeah, the Essex Essex County went down in the storm. We got multiple wounded and some dead, and uh, were being attacked by uh, hostile individuals. Something is attacking Beacon Island. That's correct. Um, recently, we found a a rowboat uh, of people that washed up on shore, and from the survivors. And from us looking at the bay, we understand that the light is out. That's correct. Uh, I think I could fix it. Uh, it'd probably take me about 30 minutes or so. With our vehicle, we can probably get there if you can get the light on. Copy. I'm going to leave someone here to continue communications while I work on it. Copy. I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, I'm going down to barricade the door, and I'm shooting any fish people that I encounter along the way. Do we do we we'll know that uh, if if we don't have the lens, that the Coast Guard's going to be able to get to us with just bulbs without the lens? Or if you're saying that with an earshot of Sully, uh, Sully's estimate would be that without the lens, it's probably good enough. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go help barricade as well. Okay, yeah. so going downstairs and um, looking at the front door, there are some latches on it you can uh, close. Looking outside in the storm, don't see anything else. Just the okay. churning waters, the rain falling everywhere. Um, if you want to lock the door and grab some chairs, um, there is a room to your immediate right that you going inside. There's a bunch of beds uh, if you wanted to pick them up. Um, well, is there I, is there any way to you know lo- uh, like wedge the chair underneath the door, uh, whatever is on the door, so that? Yes, you know, if you wanted to wedge a chair under there, it would make it significantly harder to open the the door. Can we also then look around to see, like I said, if there's like a a gaff, uh, you know, a long pole with a hook on it? And a point, you know, for getting um, fish. you know, looking in the pantry um, that is filled with canned food and the the like. Um, yes, we'll say that you can find one there. It makes sense. What about windows? Windows. Windows. Um, there is not any windows in the main hallway, but in each of the four rooms of the cottage, um, there is. Um, let's see here. You guys have seen the whole lighthouse at this point, so I can post a map of. Is there a, the very top of the lighthouse, at the top of the stairs, is there like a hatch that you can close over the top of the stairs? There is not. It is just a straight, the stairs transition up, up into it. Um, because of the way that the stairs are, um, there's a very wide, like they're, they're open. When you start walking down them, a ceiling doesn't immediately come to you. There's like a good 10 feet of like hole that theoretically someone could climb up the stairs. Um, to there. Make it so that you can only have one person coming up the stairs at a time. Well, I mean, even so, I only got a mag less. I mean, well, we got, we've got a gaff now. So if the things are trying to come up the stairs and we're at the top of the stairs, we can just keep poking That's them. That's true. Head. Keep Heavy them at bay. Two barrels, boxes. Things There's like, a couple barrels in the pantry that can be, you know, pushed down the stairs. There's also some Vienna sausage if you're hungry. <laughs> so, Sully, uh, you want to get started working on the fixing the beacon? I do. Give me that mechanical repair roll. All right, that's a uh, normal success. Let me see how much I could spend if it would help. What it what the more you spend, the higher level success affects how quickly you'll get it done. All right. I'm going to spend enough luck to get it down to a hard pass. Let me just do some arithmetic here. I'm going to spend uh, 25 luck on it. Okay. Um, after about 20 minutes of work, uh, for the rest of you, while you're working on barricading and the like, there's been no disturbances, uh, just the storm, which is starting to ease up, though it's still um, not ideal. 
Um, but while you've got all the windows barricaded, you've got your barrels at the top of the stairs, you've got the front door sealed off. Um, Sully, you managed to replace the bulb, and then as soon as you get it properly replaced, turn the power switch back on, mm -hmm. uh, it lights up. And though it's not as bright as it could be, it's, uh, it's certainly bright enough. All right. Um, I'm a little excited because of this success, and I'm going to sprint down the stairs and grab the radio and, and get on there and say, uh, Coast Guard, uh, Big Island, do you copy? Copy. We see the light. Is it safe to approach? As far as I can tell, yes. ETA, 10, 15 minutes. Copy that. Over and out. Thank God, the cavalry. Okay. Hopefully the island's not covered in fish people that will kill the cavalry when we get here. So, looking out the, the windows from the top, you do see a Coast Guard vessel um, that's got about, um, you can see about 10 men up on the front deck, and some of them you can see have rifles uh, prepared. Um, but as they get to the front dock, uh, you see a man gets out and is calling, Hello! Let's go. Up here. No, let's go. Go, go, go. Let's run down to the boat. I'll run down. Right. Okay, you guys run down. Get your stuff off the front door. Uh, go out there, and there's a small squad uh, of men, and some of them are, are pointing guns around. And one of them says, is that all of you? That's all of us. Uh, you mentioned the island is oh, under yeah. attack. Can you tell where, where are these individuals that seem to be? Top of the lighthouse, there's some weird bodies. Um they seem to be get, go down to the other, the, the south, or the, the other end of the island, at the other at the other dock. They they, they were escaping that way towards the towards the shore, uh, into the, the ocean. The lighthouse keepers, two of them are dead. Um, they've been torn to shreds by these things. Okay, so as all of you are ushered onto the ship, um, and so, three men go inside. Eventually, we hear uh, some screams up there. Uh, which quickly fade away. A few minutes later, the three men looking rattled uh, come down. They go to a private room of the ship with the commanding officer. A few minutes of anxiously waiting around. Um, then the, the head officer comes up and says, uh, all right, we're going to evacuate from here. I uh, hope before this storm gets any worse, we've got a bit of a quiet moment here. Let's go. And as the ship sails and eventually safely makes it to the mainland, uh, that is the conclusion of the scenario. How much gold did I get away with? <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, evenly. nobody said anything about... We're evenly. Uh, I guess, I mean, since people did see it uh, on the boat right back, is anybody uh, saying anything? They all about forgot. They did? <laughs> I, no, I'm going to say I, something. I, I was just, gonna, uh, if they came back, I was going to throw you under the bus and let them know that you had it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling. But you <laughs> didn't know I had it. anything. Oh, no, I, we, 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 we saw we, uh, when, when, um, when, with the bodies. We you did see back. him pocket that pouch, yeah. but to be fair, I don't you think don't Sully... I don't know anything about gold, but I... Yeah, you have no idea what I would have no it. idea what I was giving away. I, I am going to tell Braylon <laughs> that I am an FBI agent, and if he doesn't give me half of that, I'm going to arrest him. You flash your badge? You're not an yeah. FBI agent. What the he hell flashes is a genuine. It is a genuine Bureau of Investigation badge. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> no, are, are, are you Thelonious? Are I'll you going to demand all the coins? I'll no, come it. on, fair is fair. I'll no, can... I'll make him think that I'm splitting it with him, but I only got six coins. I'll give him three. <laughs> I'll take um, it. I don't know how many saying, actually you, you have managed to. I didn't say this because I just uh, kind of got um, uh, caught up in it. Uh, that heavy purse had about 10 of them. Six. I had six. I'll give you three. All right. My accounting skill is base, so I will take that. <laughs> yeah, each of those base. coins is worth $20. If you melt them down and just do the gold. Yeah. 
We don't know what. Let's hope that no one comes. Let's hope that no one comes looking for that uh, Innsmouth gold, eh? Yeah, I'm gonna be pursued. I don't know. It's not magical gold. It's just gold. <laughs> I think the contact deep one spell is used by throwing a gold coin into the water. I might uh-huh. be wrong on that. But I recall, okay. or at least that's how they what they do in the Shadow of Innsmouth. I believe that's what. Uh, what is it, Captain Obed Marsh? Obed Marsh first contacts them. Um, so give us is is we did we pretty much figure it all out? Um, more or less. So what happened is the light the night where the power uh, went out and the beacon was out for a few hours in February. At that moment, there was a small um, undetected uh, smuggling ship with uh, filled with Innsmouth gold, um, and because of that, the ship got wrecked. And they've been trying to retrieve the gold ever since. Like just slowly sending guys out in the water, getting it bit by bit. But a problem arose in that some of the like waters started washing some of the coins up on the shore. Um, and that um, George Cassidy ended up finding these washing up. And then he started sending these letters out to find and find the value of these. And then eventually he sends a letter to Innsmouth. They realize he has, has some of the coins and that's why they sent them here to retrieve the coins that they, because they'd already gotten all the ones out of the wreck. There were just a few of them that had been scavenged um, by Was Cassidy. that the wreck that we hit? Yes. Um, and what had happened is that the previous night when Smith uh, left, he was actually kidnapped um by a deep one hybrid and a small squad of those younglings as they were called um and they interrogated him find found out the information and um they launched their attack a little bit before you guys actually got to beacon island first uh michael turner turner who was actually named warren thomas the fbi agent um he went out into the bushes to investigate the strange noise the younglings got him then the younglings and the hybrid uh, launched the attack. Cassidy was at the top of the lighthouse because it was the most defensible position with his gun in his pocket. And he did his best to kill the attackers. And he did kill them, but he also got, he died in the process. And one his missed shots hit the beacon, caused it to go out, which caused your ship to wreck. Nice. Really cool. Bro, invokes... Uh... Memories of watching. You've all seen the lighthouse. Yes. Uh, this is a it's a survival horror scenario. Yeah, that and um, the Doctor Who episode. Um, what was the name of that? Like horror at Red Rock or horror Bang something Rock like or... that, where they're all stuck on the on the uh, Tom Baker era. They're all stuck yeah. in the lighthouse. It was really creepy. Our players included Daniel Topolis, uh, Joe Bartolis, uh, Julian Arba, Max Meltzer, and myself with Sham Sabin as the Keeper of the Secrets. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows, and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Riley, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.